Hey guys, it's so great to see you again this Sunday at Living Waters Online. Last Sunday, we had such an amazing service. If you didn't uh, see that service, go back and check it out. Uh, Pastor Sid's series on fight, 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 and taking that right into the new year is actually so powerful. You've got to check out that series, especially last week's message absolutely a necessity in your life right now. I hope you guys are doing good. We are in the middle of a lockdown in Ontario. And so here we are again, guys, in the middle of a pandemic. But you know what? God is so much greater. And we talked a bit about that last week. And as we go into the service this week, make sure to get friends, get family to watch, invite everybody to watch because you are going to be encouraged in your faith and last week we talked about being encouraged in your faith and how important it is in these times but you know what in perseverance you can grow stronger and i love the word of god because god never leaves us he never forsakes us and in our weakness god is made strong and he makes that very very clear when we're going through times of crisis or pressure like i talked about a bit last week that god is like look up here because I'm gonna give you strength to persevere. And I just was thinking, and I was thinking of all these amazing men and women of God in God's word and how God sustained them through times and history. And so I was looking back on the story of the promised land and Joshua and Caleb, the two of them, how they believed God, that this was the promised land and that God had spoken to Moses that there would be a promised land for them to go to. And I love this because in these times right now, we're like, our promised land would be to get back to normal and, you know, just do the normal things like go see a movie together or, you know, have my family over for dinner. You know, that's kind of like the promised land for us right now. Or just go to a mall and shop, you know, with your friends and just hang out. But, you know, God is saying persevere because in these times of perseverance, he speaks to us. And I love this, this word destination. And it just came to me so powerfully and it was like, God's like, what's your destination? What is your destination? And I love the meaning of destination because what it actually says, it says this, it says, the place to which someone or something is going or being sent. And I love that because God is sending us. He's sending us and he sent us out into a world to be the light, to be light and hope to a generation. And we have to remember that, that we are light and hope in a dark world, even though everything around us seems to be crashing, God says, I'm going to take the crooked places in your life. If you allow him and he will make them straight and he will give you peace. And the word of God says that he gives you peace of mind. So as you go into worship today, remember that the word is your strength, that God is your peace and he has a destination for you. Church, welcome to Living Waters Online. We're just going to praise the Lord our God today. We're so grateful that you joined us today. We've got some new songs to introduce to you, so we hope you enjoy them. Come on, let's press in. Let's worship the Lord. Darkness, that 
pierce the veil God lay your kingdom come Our God is able You're forever faithful Lord Come lay your will be done Yeah
hopes crush, dream shatter Your promise, love and never after Look to the future and I dive in Into your presence like an ocean You give me life, you give me hope You give me everything I know That all you are is all I want And I can't live without your love you give me life, you give me hope, you give me everything I know that all you are is all I want and I can't live without your love. No spill of can call in my world a mess, no time for stalling. You lead me through like you're the flashlight. Of a dark night, forgiveness ransom me from failure. Pull me in love, it's like it's tailored. No longer fear the manufacturer. Took from the source, I got the past card. You give me life, you give me old, you give me everything. I No hope, death can't control the promise reaped in this. I know that on you are is all I want, and I can't live without your love. Fear has no hope, death can't control the promise reaped in this. I You give me everything I know that on you are is all I want and I can't live without your love I just can't live without your love Tell them. Fear has no hope Death can't control the promise written this I know that all you are is all I want And I can't live without your love I just can't live without your love Philippians 4, 7 tells us this. It says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. And today, that's what we really need to focus on as we get into this atmosphere and this presence of God. It's like God is speaking and it's like, get your mind on Him because He will guard your mind. And that's what we really need to focus on in this day and age. Who are we listening to? 
What voices are we allowing in? Who are we hanging out with? Are they encouraging us in our faith? Or are they taking us away from the things that we know God is calling us to? And so these are questions that we can ask right now, especially in this time when we have the time to actually check ourselves in the faith. And the Word of God tells us to make sure that we check ourselves, to make sure that we're actually in the faith. Are we in the faith? Are we living the Word of God out in this world where God has placed us to be the witnesses that He's called us to be? And I talked a little bit at the beginning, but as we're going into offering right now and giving, God had, you know, He had an idea in mind and He has an idea in mind for you. And He has a destination in mind for you. And part of that destination is being the part of the hands and feet and the voice of God in this generation but doing it the way God says to do it. And God, He knows what's best for us and he knows, our, he knows our destiny and our destiny ultimately is to be with Him. And we want to live our lives on that road. And God wants to make sure that we are on that road. So He tells us, check yourself out. Make sure you're living the faith. Make sure you believe. When Moses sent out the 12 witnesses, and you can read that in the book of Numbers, uh, when we were talking about the promised land, he sent out 12 witnesses and you know what? 10 of them came back with a bad report and said, no way we're going in there. No way that that's not where we're headed. There are giants in that land. Th these are huge problems for us. We cannot take over this land with these giants in the way. Some of you are saying that today, there's too many giants in the way. You know, I can't do what God, you know, like wants me to do. I can't believe what God says he says. Hmm. We need to check ourselves out and make sure we're not saying those things and that we are people of faith. Because you know what? There was two witnesses out of the 12. 10 gave her a bad report, two gave a good report because when they went in there, they knew that that was the place that God had destined for them. And so today, as we are giving, we know that this is our destiny, that the kingdom of God needs to come on earth as it is in heaven. And I'm super passionate about that. And I love that prayer. Jesus gave us the prayer, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's who we are as a church to make sure that God's will is working through us. And we want to be those hands and feet and we want to be able to meet the injustices in this world. And you know, justice and mercy go together. Remember that where there's injustice and justice comes in, there's a balance of mercy and justice. And that's who our God is today. And we want to take our tithe today and we thank you guys. And I thank you every week. And I say, you know, don't stop giving. Don't stop giving. We have a destination. We have a vision. We have a purpose in this city. Don't stop giving to God because God says he will open the heavens over you and your family. He is our provider. As many of us are not bringing in as much income, but you know what God says, just give percentage of what you have to give. Don't stop giving. And I love the word of God because as we give and as we are generous to give, God blesses us. So Father, as we give today, we give because Father, you ask us to give. So that, Father, your kingdom can go forth on this earth, God. That we can be a generation of Joshua's and Caleb's that know our destination. Even though there's giants, even though there's problems, even though there's things in our way, God, we know who you are and we know who we are through you, God. And so today, Father, we give to you because we know that's what we're to do. And Father God, we want to be those people in this generation and your church, that we are active. And so Father, we thank you today that we are activating our faith today, God, that we believe in what you say, God, and we know that there's more. Praise God, so good to be with you once again. And I just wanna to begin today uh, with prayer. Would you join me? Uh, Father God, we just love you so much. And Father, we thank you for the way you love us and the way you care for us. And Father, the way you lead us and the way you guide us and the way you call us to yourself, oh God, that Father, we would be strengthened in our spirit, strengthened in our walk, so that Father, all that you have for us, Father, we would receive and we would walk in it and we would be blessed by it. I thank you for today's lesson. Lord God, may it go deep. May uh, eyes be opened to see, uh, ears open to hear, <laughs> Father God, and hearts open to receive uh, what you have for us today through your word, we pray 
in Jesus' name. Well, praise God. You know, we've been looking at the blessed life, and we've been looking at all the preparation that we need, all the things we need to do to receive the full blessings of God and the full strength of God. And we've been looking at our spiritual uh, strengths thus far. And those are all so important. But there's also an area that God wants us to know about that is so scripturally sound and yet so seldom we hear about it, you know, from the pulpits these days. And it's an area that, you know, very few, you know, really want to get into. It can often, you know, cause people to think, oh, that's kind of weird and that's kind of spooky kind of stuff. And, uh, and so we don't want to rock the boat and, you know, get into these areas. But we've got to get into areas that continue to strengthen us if we're ever going to accomplish you know, what it is that God has given us to do. And so today I want you to, us to look into the Word of God with regards to angels. That's right, angels. Angels are an external force or power, if you will, that God gives us to help us through our natural walk. And in times, you know, where we are really, you know, helpless, then Father God wants you to know that there are angels all around. You have an angel, that's right. And seldom do we think about angels if we don't hear about it. And so I wanna take you on a journey through the Word of God to really show you what angels have been commissioned uh, to do in our lives and for our lives. And so if you're ready to, to go and to look into the Word of God, Praise God, and you may find, whoa, you know, never heard this stuff before. I just ask you to open your heart, open your mind, because this is the Word of God. And if we, if we can't walk in the fullness of the gospel, the Lord says we'll never be shamed by experiencing the full gospel. And so we're to be spiritually prepared, but also in our physical selves, in our physical walk, in our day-to-day -day walk, to know that we've got angels that God has commissioned that would take charge over us. Now, to take charge over us means, you know, they're commanded to, to help us in times where we are helpless in the physical realm. And so, I want to really look at the, uh, this area according to the Word of God. And uh, we're going to look at the Word of God now and really see, you know, what it is that angels are there for us and why they're there. And they're personal to us, according to the Word of God in Matthew 18, 10. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. And so, the little ones, we are God's children. Amen? And so we have angels that are constantly getting direction, if you will, and watching over us. Uh, Psalm 91 and um, verse 9 and 10 and 11 uh, reads, Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you. In other words, protection over you to keep you in all your ways. And so as they say, you know, we've got to know that there are angels all around. There are angels there for us. And so angels are given to us uh, to protect us, to watch over us. They're personal to us. Psalm 34, 7, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and deliver them. And so when it says those who fear God, in other words, we, we, we don't want to walk out of the presence of God. And so when we are staying connected with God, when we are you know, walking that righteous life, amen, that we've talked about and looked about, then we know then that there are angels there that are camped around us, amen, to help us in our daily walk uh, with the Lord. They are messengers also of protection. Daniel 3.28, good example. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
who sent his angels and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And so when they were thrown into the fiery furnace, as you read your, your Bible, or if you've never heard the account of these three men of God that were thrown into the fiery furnace by Nebuchadnezzar because of their faith and trust in God, God was there that they came walking out of the furnace unscathed, <laughs> no burns, amen, because there were angels there to protect them uh, from that fire, amen. Hallelujah. Daniel 6.22, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. And Daniel's referring here, to, of course, to where he too, because of his faith, was thrown into the lion's den to be, you know, to be devoured by the lions. And yet he was untouched. And he declares, amen, in chapter 6, verse 22, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. Man, you got it. You know, this is, this is the word of God. These are testimonies. This, this is, these are incidents where, you know, they've been documented, uh, where people have seen the results. And Acts 6, uh, 5, chapter 19, another, but at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors. Now the apostles were thrown into prison at this time and brought them, the apostles, out. <laughs> Man, now that again, that's what I say, you know, it's, it's hard, you know, sometimes for people to, to grasp these things and when they hear them. And, and if you're a new Christian, especially, you say, oh, that stuff, it's, isn't it all just, you know, um, stories or fables or, you know, they're, they're just not, you know, actual events. No, the Word of God is declaring these are actual events. Amen. Where the prison doors were just opened. Angels came. <laughs> you know, they didn't need a key to get in. They just, the door, they unlocked those doors and out came the apostles. Acts 12, 7. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and he's referring to Peter, who was now in jail, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. <laughs> and his chains fell off his hands. Uh, folks, wow. And again, another incident. Chained in prison. Angel appeared. Unlocked the door. Unlock the chains, and out Peter went. Wow, talk about walking, leaping, and praising God, amen? Angels are also a messenger of forthcoming danger. Uh, Zechariah chapter 2, verse 3, And there was the angel who talked with me going out, and another angel was coming out to meet him who said to him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. Matthew 2, verse 13. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother. Flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And so we'll get these words from angels. Often pe people, you know, uh, who also operate, we have the gift of, you know, uh, the prophetic gifting in us, wh where we have a word of knowledge, or, you know, we, we, we see things, hear things from the Holy Spirit. But angels are also to warn us of those things that are ahead. And folks, you say, well, it seems so weird, but I'm telling you, when you're close and right with God, as we've been looking at, when you're tight with God, you will hear these instructions. You will know they are of God, and you won't doubt them. You may tell somebody, oh, you know, I heard an angel spoke to me, and they might scoff at you, especially a non-believer, but there are believers say, oh, you don't believe that stuff. Folks, I'm showing you, it's in the Bible. Not only is it old, co old Covenant, you know, it's also in New Covenant. We're hearing from both the Old Testament and the, the New Covenant the scriptures. So people in both experienced their angels. Amen? That has not changed. Amen? Acts two, uh, 8, uh, verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord 
spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Again, messengers of direction. Amen. Angels also ministered to Jesus. We read the account in Matthew 4, 11, when Jesus was in the desert, right? And it goes on to say, Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Wow, that's so powerful. You know, like I get excited. And the reason I get so excited, because I've experienced this. You know, I think often it's difficult for, for pastors or preachers uh, to teach or to preach on, on a, a lot of stuff in the Bible because they've never personally experienced it for one reason or another. Uh, but I can teach this with a confidence, knowing that I've experienced angels, you know, that have done things supernatural in my life that have transported me even, you know, to a place where, you know, where I had no idea from where I was sitting to where I arrived, you know, how I got there, only concluding that angels got me there because I had to be in a very important meeting. I was stuck in a traffic jam. It should have taken me an hour to get there. I was there 10 minutes before what I had to do. I had to speak at a conference. I was there 10 minutes before. Only an angel <laughs> brought me through that, and I know that. I remember my wife Claudia coming home and saying, Sid, Sid, you won't believe it. I saw an angel tonight. And I say, wow, what happened? And she was leaving a girlfriend's house and, you know, it was way back in the early 70s. And we had a big boat, you know, it was, you know, it was a, it was a Monte Carlo, you know, stretched and she, it was snowing. And snowing so much she could not see the lines on the, on the highway that she, uh, she was driving on. And she had to make a left turn. And tried to judge, you know, when to turn. And she turned early and hit the curb that divides the highway. And the car had a big long front end on it, <laughs> amen, and got hung up on the curb, you know, on, on the median. Actually, it was a narrow median, but it got caught up. And she spun the wheels. They wouldn't turn because they were all off the ground. And suddenly, someone came to the window, she says. And she kind of described them to me. Big, strong-looking, you know, man. And asked if he could help. And she says, yes, please. And she said, he said, just sit and I will pull you out. And uh, so she wasn't sure how, what that meant. And suddenly she felt the car lift and was moved backwards off, off the median. And she turned to say thank you, and he was gone. And she drove home, and she was kind of shaking, but she says, I know it was an angel. I know it was an angel. So praise God, you know, as I say, I have every confidence in the world because more than once have I experienced the help of an angel, knowing it was an angel of God. Hallelujah. My angel. Amen. They're used as instruments also, folks, of healing. Watch this. John chapter 5, verse 4. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. So, wow, staying tuned, amen, staying fine-tuned, you know, and knowing an angel is there and you know, and, and when we hear a voice, often it's an angel directing us. And, you know, we say, you know, well, how can I be sure? See, you'll ask that question if you're not so intimately close with the Lord. That allows you to trust and know His voice, which He speaks through the angel. Amen? And so that is what Scripture is saying. Stay close to God. Stay right with God. Know your life reflects, you know, the, the, the righteousness of God and the, 
you know, and the integrity of God and the love for God where you just, your heart is open to everyone. You love them because God loves them. You want to see them saved because it's God's plan that they be saved and reunited with him in relationship through Jesus Christ. Wow, it's so powerful. And folks, angels are even messengers of answered prayer. Wow. Wow. Look at this. Acts chapter 10, verse 3. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. Verse 4, and when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it? What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your alms, your giving, have come up for a memorial before God. In other words, your blessing and your prayers have come up before them. And as we read of the account of when prayers go up before the Lord and he's, they're precious to him, and he holds them in the cup of his hand and honors those. Wow. And will even then direct the angel as a messenger of how pleased God is with you. Wow, that's so powerful, folks. You've got to think about that. You've got to understand this is an area, wow, where I seldom, you know, experience. This is an area that I don't think about much. And it's unfortunate because we should be hearing about it more. We should be including it in our studies. We should be wanting everything God has for it. And, you know, when we're, we're absent <laughs> to the presence of angels, then we're not receiving the fullness. You know, and this is a major part of our walk, of, of being prosperous here on earth, where we're under the protection and the charge of angels that gives us all this kind of direction and uh, messages to us. They're also messengers of God's wrath. Watch this in Acts 12, 23. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him, King Herod, because he did not give glory to God, and as a result was eaten <laughs> by worms and died. Oh, gross. <laughs> you know, praise God, they're also messengers to the local church. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And so the message to the church is he knows the works that we do as a body. That's why it's imperative that you understand it's a member of Living Waters Christian Assembly. We have purpose, amen, it's to reach the lost. It's our destiny. Reach the broken, reach the hurting. That is the purpose of the church, feed the poor give water to those who are thirsty, to open the prison doors, to, to visit those who are lonely, to take care of our, you know, widows. Wow. So that we will continue in our transition in that destiny to our final destination, which is heaven. Powerful words and angels are involved in the process as we see. They're also messengers of his second coming. Matthew 25, 31 reads, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Wow. Powerful words, folks. And I hope you'll just receive this teaching and these scriptures and ponder them and really dwell on the fact that you have an angel 
there that has charge over you, there to help you. But if you refuse to believe in these things which are of God, you'll only not receive them. You will never have that walk, the fullness of the prosperous walk, which is body, soul, and spirit, on earth that God has for you. And so I encourage you, dwell on what you've heard today. You may want to go back and re-listen to the broadcast and write the scriptures down and study them. But there's so much, there's so much evidence, there's so much more evidence of angels in the Bible. I've given you some highlights, man, that really go deep. And, and as I said earlier, I know I can teach these you know, uh, scriptures with confidence because I've lived them, I've experienced them, and I constantly experience them. And, you know, maybe you've been through a situation, you say, wow, you know, uh, I don't know how, what happened there, you know, it had to be God. Well then, you know, what you need to know is an angel there to assist you, to get you through, to bring you to that place of safety and security, amen? So God bless you. God loves you so much. Amen and amen. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine. So it's by my side And nothing from against me shall stand You hold the whole world in your hands I'm holding on to your promises You are faithful Praise God. <laughs> Again, we're looking. Amen. We're looking at the Word of God. And you've got to say, the Word of God is challenging to us. The Word of the Lord, you know, really, you know, is calling us to go deeper, calling us to go beyond, amen, what other people say <laughs> or what other people do that call themselves Christians and to really begin into these areas, get into these areas that God has given us so that we can fight that good fight and walk that, you know, walk and be spiritually prepared. We're spiritually prepared, you know, for the battle because, you know, by understanding that the weapons of our warfare are mighty to the tearing down of strongholds. So the strongholds is, you know, 
the Word of God, the relationship with God is mighty, the Holy Spirit in us, to speaking to us about the strongholds that we have, which, you know, strongholds means opposition to God or things that are lo we've locked in, which are not necessarily tr truth, uh, things that don't line up with the Word of God. And so we've looked at how to unlock that and putting on the mind of Christ. Now, uh, God is saying, okay, here's what I've also given you in your natural walk. And praise God. And so, you know, you might be sitting there and you're a new Christian. You're saying, oh, Pastor said, now you really got me. You know, and I, now there's, these are things that are just swirling. And I just say, you know, I'm here to teach you, you know, you often hear from the pulpits, you know, this is what you should be doing. You know, this is what Jesus has showed you to do. But you need to know the how-tos of achieving what it is Jesus has for you, what God has for you. And so these are, these are teachings to help you understand, you know, who you are in Christ, how God sees you, how you have been given the very fullness of the Godhead, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit within you to help you in your spiritual direction, to change your stinking thinking so that you can put on the mind of Christ. And now you're looking at lessons on how God has provided for you in your natural walk. And so praise God, you know, call upon those angels, amen, knowing that they're there to help you. And the next time you say, wow, what, what was that? Wow, that was, I was so lucky. No, you're not lucky. Wow, that was so, oh, that had to be God. Yeah, those were angels that helped you through those situations. And so if you're sitting there as well and you've been contemplating, you know, you know, what you're hearing and you haven't really, you know, given your heart to Christ or you haven't, you know you're not saved, but now there's a deep desire to know, to walk in these powerful, powerful, you know, provisions that God has for you, then it's time that God says to you, okay, just repent, change your thinking about who you think I am, and ask for forgiveness for the ways that you have walked that you're not really pleased with or has just been so filled with self and you've had all kinds of brokenness in your life. And ask Jesus Christ to come into your life because God says, you come to me through my son who went to the cross and died for your sins. And so asking Jesus, to come into your life, take over your life, then if you pray that prayer, then God is calling you now unto salvation. He's saving you now. And you have become a member of the family of God, open now to all of these things that God has for you. Wow, nothing greater in our lives than to be saved by God. He loves you so much. So do we. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. Wow, loving these messages from Pastor Sid. So inspiring and amazing, right? Just knowing that God is looking out for us and that he sends those angels to guard us. And that's in the word of God and I love it, that we're not alone. And just know that today, that you're not alone today, that God is watching over you and that he is with you and he will never leave you. He won't forsake you no matter what. And we just want you to know here at Living Waters, if you need prayer, drop us a comment. Leave us a comment. We love when you guys drop us a comment to pray. We want to believe with you. So do that today. If you need prayer for anything, we want to agree with you. And make sure to follow us on all our socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube. Continue to come to church. Continue to get strengthened in your faith. For we have a destination, and that's where we are headed. See you next week at LW Online.